So to continue with this conversation, we're going to hear from two speakers, Paula Getz and Dr. Janice Knoffel, who will be speaking about employment, entrepreneurship, and aging in healthcare. First, we're going to start with Paula. So Paula has been a leader in the computer services industry for almost 40 years, heading global initiatives and leading teams as a trained risk and project manager. Paula holds Six Sigma and Information Technology Infrastructure Library, or ITIL, process certifications. In 2003, she was awarded the Silicon Valley Young Women's Club of America Twin, the Tribute to Women in Industry Award. In 2005, she returned home to New Mexico to work remotely while traveling for work and across the world. In 2018, the New Mexico Technology Council awarded Paula the Women in Technology Award, which recognizes outstanding women in New Mexico's STEM fields for their industry and community contributions. Paula retired from Sun Oracle in 2021. Throughout her life, Paula has been a volunteer, a mentor, and an advocate for unrepresented, underrepresented communities. In addition to her day job at Oracle, she was part of leadership at Open, Oracle's global LGBTQ employee resource group for over six years. In 2018, she was also awarded the Albuquerque Business First Diverse Business Leaders Award. Paula recently started a new chapter in her life as the founder of New Mexico New, a social profit working to engage people aged 50 to 70 plus, the new elders, who want to stay active in their communities as consultants, part-time employees, advisors, board members, coaches, mentors, or volunteers. This nonprofit was recently acquired by CNM Ingenuity with Paula staying on as an advisor to the program. Paula has just finished her terms on the UNM Anderson School of Management Alumni Council and is board member of All Faiths Children Advocacy Center where she was chair of the Audit Compliance Committee. She continues to volunteer at UNM and the Albuquerque Community Foundation. Paula is a native New Mexican, born and raised in Santa Fe, and one of seven children. I got you, I'm one of nine, so I got you by two. She earned her Bachelor of Arts in Business Computer Systems from UNM Anderson School, Business School. She lives in the village of Los Ranchos with her wife and two dogs. Please join me in welcome Paula Getz to the floor. This one. Thank you, everybody, and, and wow, thank you for that introduction. Uh, and uh, I really just want to congratulate um, Department of Senior Affairs for having this summit. We talked about it for a few years, and it's just so exciting that it's here and that we're doing, doing this today. So it's, it's, a, it's a victory. Um, and I'm just, I'm so glad to be here and talking about one of my favorite subjects and um, something that I really just fell into, right? So, we're, we're <laughs> so, so I, I've been asked to talk about employment 50, after 50 and the reality of it, but also um, the opportunity of it. So as Janine mentioned, um, we, there is definitely some ageism to talk about in it. But then there's also that I have found too is the opportunity of it too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do both. So uh, this is chart is the chart that Janine showed, right? And our population is changing, right? We're living longer. They say that now a child born today will live to a hundred, right? So we have added. You know, it used to be we worked um, our 40 years in high tech. We would retire and we would live about 15 years more maybe if we were lucky and then we died and uh, hopefully went to heaven. Right? And, and that was it. And today that is not what the reality is. right? We, and, and so we're, we'll talk about that changing demographic. But as, as um, Janine talked about, this is U.S. data, but I've worked a global job long enough that it's not just a U.S. issue. It is across the world. They, that we are living longer because of healthcare advances, because of our, our um, advances in our communities, and we're not having as many children. So we are an aging population, right? And that's the good news. 
And we have to be conscious about that. We haven't always been as conscious as we should. So because of those changes, our workforce changed, right? And then this chart, I don't know if you, you showed this one, but you didn't, okay. So there are now five generations in the workforce. And so as we talked about, a lot of that intergenerational um, collaboration is essential now. Before we just talked about it, it was a great idea. Now it's essential because there's five generations in the workforce. And to take advantage of all the gifts that all those generations bring to the workforce, that's the way we're, we're gonna have um, better workforce. And so this chart shows age 55 plus is growing. It's one of the fastest growing as the age 25 to 54 and the, the lower age, 16 to 24, decrease. So that's why this, especially summits like this, are so important. We gotta start talking about this and we gotta start as Janine advocates oh so lovely. And I, I just wanna say we're so fortunate to have gotten her to come speak to us. So thank you again for making the trip to New Mexico. All right, so the opportunities. As I said, the largest percentage of the, for, of the workforce by 2028, 48 million people, 55 plus will be in the workforce. So I'm just gonna do a lot of this data and then I wanna get to our solutions about it. And the, the, the stat that I give so many times and people just um, are shocked at it, but from now until 2029, 10,000 people turn 65 every day in the US. So if the charts didn't do that, that stat, you should remember, 10,000 people every day turn 65. And there's a lot like myself. I did, uh, as, as the bio said, I was born and raised in Santa Fe, graduated from UNM, and because I was born and raised in New Mexico, I'm like, I'm getting the heck out of here. After, right, we, we, us natives never know what we have until we leave and then we realize how great this place is. And so I left. I left for 23 years and came back, did a global job. I came back, felt like I want to do something meaningful for my next chapter. I did, last thing I wanted to do, so to your question, Steve, last thing I wanted to do was get an IT job around project management or risk management. No way, thank you. Uh, but I knew I had a lot of skills because I volunteered for nonprofits and um, I was shocked when uh, I, there's a story that one time they were planning an event, this no nonprofit I was volunteering for. They were having trouble um, planning it. So I said, can I facilitate it? And I stepped up and I passed out um, post-its and I said, everybody write down the tasks you think need to be done. And we did a typical project management, moving around the post-its. We were done in like 10 minutes. We had the thing planned, it was all, everybody knew what they were gonna do. And I turned around and everybody in the nonprofit was like, wow, how did you know how to do that? And the thing was, I real, started to realize that stuff that I learned 40 years in corporate with my eyes closed. And so I had all these gifts that now I could give back to the state of New Mexico that I love so much. And I also realized how hard it was for me to figure out how to give back. And so, uh, I knew that I wanted a meaningful job. I knew I had deep skills to share. And I then said, I had this idea, let's make it easy and, and make it easy for all of us to engage and find a place to share our gifts. And, and everyone told me, it's your idea, you gotta do it. I, I really didn't wanna start a nonprofit. I really just wanted somebody to pick it up, but I knew Everyone said, it's your dream, you gotta start it, so I did. And then I'm so fortunate CNM Ingenuity had the vision to know that this was something we need to do for our state. So um, in 2019, our governor, Michelle Lujan Grisham, actually had a proclamation about this, right? And back then, in 2010, our, our over 60 population was 17.5 of the population across the state. In 2030, so that's six years, although this we already know is close to it, 30% uh, of our population across the state will be um, over 60. Director Sanchez, Anna will always say, in Bernalillo County, that's gonna be 40 plus percent. So think about that. Six years from now, 40% of our population in Albuquerque is gonna be over 60. So that's one, for health reasons, we'll hear about it, for the economic opportunity of that. And remember that sharing of gifts, we have got to make it easy for us to engage at least some portion 
of that 40% and keep us working, keep us engaged for our minds and for our health. So AARP also, because we live in New Mexico, we know that a portion of that 40% is going to need help. That it's not a choice of if they want to work, it's that they need to work because they will retire into poverty. Their pension from PERA or from, um, from the APS will not cover the expenses and we need to make sure that we have opportunities for them to continue to work. So the, they, we talked about the great resignation and this is some of the ageism that has exists. In the 2008 with the great recession, one out of uh, 25%, one out of four Americans that were over 50 plus lost their job. And then from 2010 to 2018, 55% were forced to retire over 50. So we know those stats. And we know that that labor participation rate, which we talk about on the bottom for 65 plus, even after the pandemic, that has not recovered yet. So Janine touched on that, right? So there is definitely some ageism there. In the 2020 pandemic, 2.4 million um, retirees retired, right? I was one of them. That's when I left Oracle, August 2021. And I was fortunate that I had the choice to leave. But there was many of my co uh, friends and cohorts in high tech that I watched and um, connected with on LinkedIn that were forced out. And we watched all the institutional wisdom walk out the door. Now a lot of them are trying to return to the labor market. I myself, I know that I'm not one, and most of my family knows and my friends know, I'm not one that's just going to sit around and, and watch TV. And I mean, I love hiking. I, uh, Larry's going to teach me how to play pickleball. But I know I need more than that, right? And I know I have more than that to give. And that's the more important. And I know that if I do that, one, the contribution to the economy, I mean, look at that, four, uh, that's, we're expected to triple to 27 trillion over the next three decades if we can engage this older adult workforce. So why hire, why hire a, uh, an older worker? 10% of the older workers, uh, if you do hire it, you get a 1.1% increase in productivity. And your turnover goes, over, um, goes down because of the engagement intergenerationally. GDP, and this is from the older uh, age-friendly employer guide that I'll talk about. 87% of workers greater than 45 perform as well or better than existing employees, and, and that GDP can rise 19%. And right now, like we said, there's two openings for everybody looking for a job. There's a labor shortage everywhere you go, right? You see help wanted signs. Guess what? We're not engaging this workforce that we have that can help solve that problem. And now we're, with CNM Ingenuity especially, we've looked at founders. And AARP talks about the age of, I think it's 51 is the average age to start a business now. A 50-year-old entrepreneur will experience 1.8 times more growth than a founder in their 30s. And it makes common sense, right? We um, stumbled, we learned, um, and we've learned lessons, hopefully, as we've stumbled in our careers, and we know how to apply them to our current business adventures. So I'd say any employer that's looking to figure out how do I hire older workers, there's a guide now. And this is from the Encore Network, it's free, and this is the, one of the benefits of this Encore Network that is a nationwide group that Larry and I have engaged in. Um, Janine was a part of building this. It's a huge gift to, our, to across the United States. So get the guide. It has a lot of good information in it. Larry and I are right now on another team building a 50 plus job seeker guide. So for the other side, it's for the worker looking for work. And we're hoping to have that out in, in, in the winter, I'll call it. <laughs> And what's the benefits to older worker? Well, we, we know, and I'll talk a little, I'll skip a lot of this with time, but three times, um, elders working past 65, three times more likely to be in good health, right? We know that um, if we are engaged, we're gonna reduce depression, isolation, and loneliness. And if we don't, if people, especially older adults, and the Surgeon General just came out with this after the pandemic for all age groups, that if we start to experience this loneliness and isolation, it's equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. 
So how important is that to start really engaging and keeping people active so that our health systems don't get that impact? So we gotta rethink jobs, right? We gotta rethink about how people tell me, well, I don't wanna hire an older worker because they only wanna work 20 hours. And you know what? That's right. We don't wanna work full time, but I guarantee you two part-time older workers that have come in with experience are, are a lot you'll get a lot more productivity out of them than if you hire one new um, person to the industry, full-time equivalent. So th we gotta rethink that. We gotta rethink how we do job sharing and the like. Here's a bunch of websites that cater to older workers nationally. I love some of the names like Orenta Grandma, give me a break. Uh, some of them are good, but they're, and, and the AARP job board is great. They're not catered to New Mexico though. And this is when I started looking for jobs and saw a lot of these. But why does every job seeker have to do that on their own? And that's when we created this nonprofit called um, New Mexico New, New Elder World, which is now a program in, as a part of CNM Ingenuity. And I just want to introduce Natalie Donnelly, who's program manager at CNM Ingenuity. And and Larry Ollie, who's been the president of NM New Board and a big, huge help. So, and we couldn't have done it without AARP New Mexico or um, Department of Senior Services. Every time I asked Anna Sanchez to, re to write a grant letter at, the, up at midnight, she'd be in there writing letters. So it is about, and I'll go to this because I know we're getting we, three pathways learning, so reskilling, Steve, as we talked, reskilling, upskilling. If you want to do something different than what your career was, come reskill. And our existing curriculum already goes into some, you know, CNM Ingenuity's been doing silver entrepreneurship. How do you start a business over 50? They already had some stuff going, so we've combined our learning. Then we're going to build this hub that'll leverage a technology application that they already have for student interns. We'll just make it for part-time jobs for seniors. And so it'll be a lot, it's a great collaboration and a great example of how we can work together intergenerationally. And then from that, we will have people engage socially. We know it. it that'll happen organically. And so new elders like myself would go in and put myself in. This is who I am. This is how... Um, this is my skills, this is my passions, this is what volunteers I would like to do. And then nonprofits, municipalities like City Albuquerque, um, any startups, small businesses can come in and look for resources. Is there someone who would give their skills? And a lot of times uh, for a reduced rate or maybe even free, to, I tell people maybe you gotta volunteer to a nonprofit before you find a, a paid job. So hopefully the impact um, is clear. Economically, we've got to get us working, some portion of us, right, continue to work. Not only for economic, but, it, but the jobs and the taxes that we will pay off of our billable wages. CNM's now paying me, so I'm paying taxes again. I haven't for a while. But it, and the public assistance costs that we won't have to take, right, because we'll stay active. And then I was, we were shocked, right, we were shocked at the social impact that 15 cigarettes a day, the impact of not engaging, I didn't know that until we started this nonprofit. So, that, I have time, huh, I'm out of time. Okay, so thank you, and again, I just wanna uh, give huge kudos, this just happened, but CNM Ingenuity, we just finished the uh, um, integration, and it's been, you know, I just wanna applaud their innovation and, and their willingness to look at this data and take it on, so. Thank you.